Thank you. For those of you who joined us for the uh, science exhibit, uh, this is the second phase of our program for today. And it's a little more fun and something new and unusual for us. More fun. More fun. The scientist <laughs> tells me. <laughs> but it's something unusual that we are doing for the first time. That we focus uh, not necessarily on rice alone, but we're focusing also on life that exists in the rice fields. And it's something that we actually observe quite often and throughout the growing season that you've got flocks of birds us, with us. And it's really amazing the wildlife, the flora and fauna that does exist in the fields. And in fact, uh, part of the scientific discoveries that are emerging are that we really need to pay attention to the ecology of the rice field. And that ecology enables us much more sustainable production. Because, of course, we're worried not only about productivity for today, we're worried about productivity for generations to come. So, today we've got a, an exhibit of uh, photography. And this came about quite in a serendipitous way. Uh, one day I was invited to uh, an exhibit of uh, bird photographs by Undersecretary Fred Serrano of the Department of Agriculture. His exhibit took place at campus. And I thought, here we've got this resource and we do have a lot of uh, birds in the fields. And why don't we invite Undersecretary Serrano and a number of other bird watching and photography enthusiasts on campus and Erie to work with us on an exhibit to show off their work. And so I also knew a number of other uh, exhibitors and you'll meet them today. And uh, we'd like to acknowledge their presence and their contributions just very quickly. Uh, first, uh, the contributor is Under Secretary of Agriculture, Secretario Serrano. Unfortunately, Fred is on mission right now. He's traveling, but uh, you'll see his photographs and his work will speak for itself. May I also introduce uh, Dr. Kirsto Paris. Uh, please join me. Please join us. Uh, Dr. Paris is a recently retired professor of economics from the University of the Philippines. and. Uh, after his long career of teaching young people has turned to bird photography. He'll, he'll have something to say about this in a little bit also. I'd also like to introduce uh, one of our colleagues, part of the Erie family, Mr. Paul Bourdain. Um, Paul Bourdain teaches mathematics and engineer at Brent School, but his passion are birds. And You'll see it uh, as, you, as he explains his work. I'd also like to, uh, for all of you to meet uh, Richard Smedley. Uh, Richard is a graduate student. He's working on his dissertation about bird ecology. And uh, he'll tell us about how birds behave in the rice fields. And that's something that we're all learning about as we speak. Also, I should not, I should, uh, not fail to introduce uh, Michael Joyce. Has he gone? Yeah. Oh, Michael uh, created the bird sounds that you hear as part of the exhibit. And uh, he also arrived at here quite serendipitously uh, as a partner to one of our scientists, and he came and joined us for this. And finally, I should acknowledge our creative team that put together this uh, exhibit. Uh, the team is led by uh, Paul Hilario. Uh, Paul Hilario is also the curator of this Rice World Museum. And uh, we shouldn't forget the entire communications team and events and visitors team of Erie. Uh, first led by Gene Hettel. Uh, who just can't stop doing communication. <laughs> And uh, uh, Ria Dimapilis. Is she here? Ria, please. Can everybody see you? <laughs> <laughs> but she'll join us in a bit. 
she helped engineer this whole affair, uh, put together all the, a lot of the logistics that went into the support. Ria, please. So, uh, may I again uh, introduce our Director General, Robert Zeder. Thank you very much, Bruce. Um, you said everything that I thought I was going to say. <laughs> well, I'm sure I'll think of something. No, I, I, uh, I have the great fortune of having one of those fantastic office views in the world. My view sits on the corner of the building opposite the fountain and looks out on Mount Bonahau and the surrounding areas. And in the foreground is just a wonderful array of bird life in the rice paddies. And it wasn't always like that. In the 1960s, 1970s, into the 1980s, uh, we, or not we, but those who grew rice thought that anything in the rice field that wasn't rice was a pest. And so there was a lot of spraying of pesticides. And basically, the rice paddies in many places were almost deserts in terms of biodiversity. Uh, we came to understand the ecology of the rice paddies, and now, in our production fields and research fields, we uh, spray pesticides at a rate that is almost zero. Uh, 97, 98 percent drop in pesticide usage in our fields. And what we're seeing is a tremendous flourishing of life in the paddies. The birds are at the top of the food chain. And if you have birds out in your rice paddies, egrets and other, other uh, 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 feeders, you know you have a healthy pad. You have a, you have a healthy environment that insects and frogs and, and other invertebr and invertebrates can live quite happily out there and can provide enough food for the birds as well as produce a healthy rice crop. And so this exhibit, the birds of, 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 of Weary or the birds of the rice paddy, is in fact a celebration of healthy rice paddies and is an indication that the rice uh, ecosystems in Asia can be very healthy systems that will contribute to maintaining the very important biodiversity. So this celebration is really a celebration of biodiversity, a celebration of what we've learned over the decades and what a healthy food system is all about. So I want to congratulate our colleagues here who have put this together. You see them out at all hours of the morning. Uh, five o'clock in the morning, creeping around, looking for birds. They're a very strange lot, and we don't want to go into that very deeply. Uh, but I love them, and, and I, I admire them and wish I had the, the patience and the dedication to, uh, uh, to be as persistent in, in, uh, in tracking our fine feathered friends. And uh, again, thank you so much for putting this together. It is a stellar, it's a stellar exhibit and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And we do have cocktails and, uh, and snacks for you. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Bruce. A presentation on facts and myths about birds by Richard Spencer. Well, uh, thank you very much. I think I'll start by uh, thanking, thanking you to be asked to talk. Uh, thank you for being part of this. And uh, thank you to the two introduction we've already had. Um, pretty much said anything I've got written down on my cards. Um, so what I'll do is I'll start with a bit of an introduction about myself. Um, I'm, uh, as, I, as Jim said, I'm a PhD student here, uh, based from the University of Reading in the UK. I spend all my time here looking at the birds. It's absolutely amazing. But first and foremost, I label myself as a bird. Um, the birds is what draw me here. And this is what really drove, which really drives my research every day. Uh, as, as we mentioned, the Getting up at the uh, ridiculous time uh, in the morning to go and see what's around is the, one of the most exciting things you can do. And if you can ever get it as a job, I highly recommend it. Um, but unlike other people here, um, I must say that uh, my background is as a birder, so I do very little on rice. So uh, whilst I was still in the UK, I did a lot of research on birds in rice fields. And actually, um, for a geographical area that provides quite a lot of the global market for rice, there's very little research which uh, can be found most of which comes from the US or Europe. So uh, with this, that this gives us a huge blank canvas, especially within the Philippines here, where area is mostly based, and with the partner countries as well, where we can look at kind of what, what we can do with rice fields to both benefit birds and the farmers. So with no act 
actual kind of uh, literature review, as it were, or no literature on uh, birds in my schools. I, I went to the birds on the uh, to the sorry to the farms in the field and asked what their knowledge on birds was, and it, and this opened up to the largest myth, which has already been mentioned once already this evening, is that all birds eat rice. Uh, which, if you take away nothing from me from this evening, is it's a complete myth. That's that's completely untrue. Um, they seem to have been uh, uh, convicted. Uh, sorry. Yeah, convicted without any evidence. Uh, people see birds flying away, uh, and they think they're eating the rice when, when that's just not true. Um, what what you're about to see in, in the door behind me is an amazing array of birds of colours, shapes, and sizes, and very few of them have got uh, uh, actually eat the rice at any time, uh, let alone uh, during seasonal times in their in their life cycle. Um, so why do we have winged scapegoats? Why, why do they get the uh, the blame of all the loss of yield that uh, we hear so much about? Um, and it's mostly because there is a lack of knowledge out there. Um, there are a few of us who work on birds, and there are a few of us who would go out and have a look. But that information is taking a while to get through. And and so what what the big message from this exhibition mostly will be is that, that all the birds are amazing and that not all of them eat rice and that, that if that trickles down into a day by day kind of situation and farmers realise this, then we can stop the unnecessary persecution of the species that's, uh, which is going on. Now I'm not mentioning that uh, not all birds don't eat rice, there are some out there and, and you'll see uh, some of the descriptions by the pictures behind me of the birds which you need to be aware of and you, and you need to know. But there's also birds in there which can perform an ecological engineer system, which again has been mentioned briefly, um, about how that you can use these birds. You can use the birds that turn up and their natural behaviour for taking the invertebrates, for taking pest species, and increase. And the the overall goal, sorry, is to increase your yield whilst you simultaneously farm the fields for migratory species, for these species which uh, are going to benefit you overall in the long term. Um, so, and I'm just going to tie up quickly, uh, with what, what can we do next? Um, and, and it's really simple, and that's to go through those doors and enjoy every single bird you see in there, um, because they're around. Uh, all you need to do is look up, um, and, you, and you don't need to be out at 5 o'clock in the morning. They are around most of the day. They're just a bit more trickier to see. Um, so enjoy, um, see what we can see. Uh, and learn the species and, and spread the news that actually birds are our friends and we want to keep them as long as possible. Thank you. While Under Secretary Serrano is on mission, we are fortunate indeed to have Mrs. Serrano join us today to speak a little bit about her husband's bird watching and her husband's work. Please. Afternoon, uh, Fred misses uh, this uh, afternoon's activity, and in his behalf, I would like to read this message sent through email. <laughs> okay, uh, Your Excellencies, the Director General, officials and members of the ERIC organization, leaders and constituents of the UPFD and nearby communities, friends, good afternoon. We thank you for coming over to grace this landmark occasion, probably the first dedicated to birds in the rice fields. We thank and commend Peter for conceptualizing and initiating this photo exhibit as the organization's contribution to the Philippine National Year of Rice 2013. We value this initiative by Irina just because it showcases the bird photography of the two most active McKilling area bird photographers, Dr. Tirso Paris, among my favorite professors from undergraduate days, and up to the present, still my patient teacher in a lot more good things, and myself, but primarily for the informative and educational value to the community. Farmers, students, the science community, ordinary visitors to Ely, the immediate community, and their believers. It is hoped that this exhibit will foster a better understanding and appreciation of our magnificent avian friends from the most common Eurasian tree sparrow, a low value target for some bird photographers, to the now rarely seen rails, such as the watercock, rainbow hen, or the ruddy breasted crake. 
All birds are incredible creatures, and their value to my to any ecosystem far outweigh their perceived prejudice to human economic interests. This exhibit will also dispel the misconception of many, fostered by some as well, that ERI is a toxic chemical spewing monster of a technology developer. <laughs> the pro proliferation at ERI and UPLD rice fields of such a wide diversity of birds, resident as well as faithfully returning migrants, is testimony to the vastly improved environmental friendliness of modern rice technology. Uh, it is the ignorance of people of our wildlife protection laws, the environment and the right of every creature to continue to coexist and share this planet with us that poses the greatest threat to their survival. We hope that this exhibit is just the beginning and with the help of dedicated theory researchers like Ms. Rich Midley, we may yet come up with a cheap and widely circulated handout on rice birds for the general population, especially the young. By my experience, if bird watching is 100% awe and wonder, bird photography is about 97% disappointment given the shooting conditions. But that minuscule 3% of boundless exhilaration easily overwhelms all difficulties and disappointments. The dedication more than doubled by opportunities and graces such as this here exhibition. Again, my profuse thanks and best wishes to all of you. My thanks too to my family for bearing with oftentimes odd behavior, the odd hours, the consistent record of escapes from household chores, and the strange equipment purchases. We hope you all enjoyed the exhibit. Thank you. And now, uh, Professor Gersopalis. Call my wife to read my letters also. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just some notes. Uh, first of all, uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone, and uh, welcome to this uh, opening of the uh, board exhibit. Uh, my message is uh, really just some word or words of uh, thanks. First, I'd like to thank Bruce for coming up with the idea of having a for the exhibit and uh, following it through until this opening day. There are a lot of people who are involved in this uh, undertaking, some in direct uh, way, some behind the scenes, and they all have to be uh, thanked for. Uh, I'd like to especially thank uh, Rose Paul and uh, congratulate you for uh, orchestrating uh, this uh, event uh, uh, in an excellent manner. Uh, second, I'd like to thank Eli for uh, providing the space within which the birds are able to uh, uh, survive and perpetuate themselves. I think that's a testament of the fact that uh, uh, Eli is that, uh, putting in uh, a lot of uh, chemicals that uh, kill the birds. They're there they're, uh, from one month to another. Uh, so uh, thank you for, for, for that, uh, because that gives us photographers and bird watchers uh, immense uh, pleasure. The third I'd like to uh, thank most is uh, the Erie Security Office, especially the uh, Glenn uh, Enriquez, uh, I hope, is here because uh, we have been uh, bothering him uh, every week or so uh, because uh, we would like to come into their uh, upland and lowland fields and uh, sometimes I bring visitors from the Wild Bird Club of the Philippines and also the Wild Bird Photographers of the Philippines. And uh, he has been gracious in allowing us to uh, visit the fields and uh, be able to photograph various birds. Now, uh, why do we photograph birds? Well, uh, you might have read that, you know, it's really a passion, but uh, we do it not only for aesthetic and uh, artistic value, but uh, 
we would like to think that we're also doing something for posterity. Uh, I am part of the Wild Bird Club, uh, okay, Wild Bird Club of Philippines and uh, Wild uh, Bird Photographers of Philippines. And we espouse what is called the uh, conservation uh, photography. And by that, we mean we would like to take pictures, and not only pictures, but beautiful pictures, which uh, are intended to increase uh, public awareness about uh, the presence of many beautiful birds in the Philippines. Not just the Mayas that you, you see. A lot of people say that I thought the, the only birds that could be seen here are the Munyas and the Mayas, but there are in fact a lot of beautiful birds. So that's, that's one. Uh, another thing is uh, we'd like to make known to people that uh, a lot of our birds are critically endangered and some of them are in fact vanishing. So we would like to be able to uh, uh, sort of stop this uh, kind of uh, development and uh, we are trying to undertake uh, programs in fact that uh, will help uh, save some of our uh, endemic bird species which are pretty great danger. So uh, I disregard, uh, I'd like to introduce to you our president, uh, the Wild Bird uh, Photographers of Students, uh, Ray Santana. And uh, all members, uh, Ben Rojas, uh, Ben Rojas and uh, they are my special present. I don't know if uh, Mike who is here from the Wild Bird Club of Philippines, but uh, uh, I understand that he has been invited. So, once again, uh, welcome to uh, the opening of uh, our colleagues exhibit. I hope uh, you will enjoy it. Thank you very much. And now, last but not least, the Paul Warden. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you very much for, for coming. This is um, quite an important exhibit to, to me and to um, the rest of us who put in a fair amount of time and effort into this. When I uh, arrived in the Philippines five years ago, um, I didn't know what to expect when it came to, to the birds. I knew about forest birds, and the Philippines is very famous for the, uh, the number of endemics and the, and the quantity and variety of the birds in the forest, but the farmlands was a little bit of a mystery, and I must admit I had pretty low expectations. And um, I came out into the fields, and to be honest, I was astonished. It was so much richer, so much more variety, so many more birds than I was expecting. I've, um, in the five years I've been here, I've recorded over 100 species just in the fields alone, um, which is a truly extraordinary number for farmland anyway, to be honest. Um, and, and particularly in the Philippines, where there's a lot of uh, human pressures and a lot of persecution of the birds. So this is um, really an, uh, an extraordinary place, and a very, very interesting um, uh, in interesting place. Anyway, so uh, that's all I really wanted to say, other than I'm extremely proud to have um, been a, played a small part in what is, I think, a, a quite important exhibit. Um, I'm, a, I'm a teacher, as I think uh, uh, Bruce mentioned. Uh, education is very, very important to me, and I see this as uh, just an extension of that. So um, I think that's really all I want to say. Just thank you very much. And now it's time to open the exhibit. May I invite Dr. Ziegler. Uh, how about the exhibitors? Uh, Dr. Paris, please join us here. I shouldn't be the one cutting these guys. At all. Yeah. Well, and uh, Paul, please. And Richard. Dr. Paris. And uh, Mrs. Serrano, please. We only have three seconds, so yeah, I will well, we'll defer. Just join the group here, please. And uh, these are. Uh, oh. And uh, are we ready to cut? Okay, so you guys, two hands. Okay. Two hands. Two handed cut. Okay, here we go. Well, you, need, you, need, you, need, you guys have to be yes. somehow participants in this. Ready? <laughs> One, two, and cut. Yay! Oh, sharp. Sharp. So, welcome, please. Uh, <laughs> 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 
Bob, would you open the door, please? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I knew there was mis missing something here. All right. Yeah. Please, uh, you're welcome.